for four hours, and then everybody jumps on the bandwagon. So I'm not going to follow in Bill's footsteps on this, because I think it would be wrong to blow Gilbert off the show entirely, because I enjoy him, and I just don't want to overdo it. Uh, I mean, he's everywhere now. He's just all over the place. And uh, he even, somebody even called in while I was sitting here with Roger sitting in the studio when Mike was on a few minutes ago and called said, can't you get Gilbert on with Mike on his show tomorrow morning? That would be like having Sandy come in tomorrow, you know, to do sugar cookies again. I, I'm sorry, but let's just, let's just come back to reality, okay? Man, this market is pathetic. It's like, um, it's like somebody tells a joke on show A and it's funny. And all of a sudden there are like ten other guys in a market telling the same joke. I just, uh, I'm sorry, I don't get it. So, Gilbert, you can uh, call or stop in every now and then. It's like Pee Pee in Pembroke Pines. He calls like once a month or something, or once every few weeks. And he's funny, but we don't overdo it. I hate when people drive stuff into the ground. And what I heard yesterday afternoon, I think we do have to get that guy uh, some cheesecake or whatever it is that he keeps squealing about, because he just um, lost, I think is the word, getting lost somewhere in the shuffle. Nice guy, Alex, but let's not... I mean, Tuesday, it was like, Jay, oh, I'm sick of that, and you're never going to hear that on this show, and we don't... And then all of a sudden, yesterday, he's got the guy in here exploiting him, and at the uh, broad that he had in here with him, and some of the callers were really making fun of him badly, poorly, and I thought it was in crappy taste, and I think that... Uh, well, listen, that's, that's just my opinion. Okay, as far as the other thing is concerned that took place yesterday, I'll get into that after the break, but I have uh, quite a bit to say about that. I, I think the... And I thank the people from Channel 6, although I have no idea why they stuck around for four hours. I guess they must have been amused by the show. And they had a little uh, piece there on the 6.30 News last night. But uh, four hours. There must have been something else going on in town beside the bird, you know, for four hours yesterday that they could have been covering, like uh, lunch at the Rascal House or anything. Anyway, speaking of Alex, he seems to be enjoying those wings from Wings. Really? Uh, 10.15 at <laughs> WYOT. And uh, what can I say? Some interesting stuff going on. Anyway, what was I going to tell you? Oh, yeah, about yesterday. I want to give you the story behind the story, if, of course, you're interested. We know this audience isn't too much into that kind of stuff. But uh, let me give you a little background of what took place here yesterday. It seems that when we made the offer to the bird to come on the show, I think it was on Monday, I had uh, Nick call him. And within 20 seconds, he respectfully declined and uh, cut him short and goodbye and good luck to you. At that point, he thought the story was going to be a real razor blade job because that's what he gave this Albert Stern, the guy who wrote the article for New Times. And the reason I know that, in spite of any denials that he might make, is that Stern was here last Friday and read to me several lines or paragraphs from what uh, the bird had told him during that interview at his house. And, I mean, he called me everything under the sun. It was a razor blade job. Now, the reason it didn't come out in print like that is because basically the people at New Times like me and they like the show. In addition to which, there's some people over there who think he's a twerp, okay? And so it really kind of backfired. And they turned it around, and it really was a lot different than he thought it was going to be. And he even told Fat Rich, which I know, even though Rich is a troublemaking yenta, I know this is true. He told him he was very nervous and concerned about how the story was going to come out in print because he really had done a wicked, I mean a vicious razor blade job. So that's why he wasn't going to come in. Then the thing comes out, he gets a hold of it uh, Monday night or Tuesday night, and then he changes his game plan. So now he shows up here yesterday, and you saw the thing on 6 where they interviewed him outside, I guess it must have been. And um, his game plan was that he was going to come sneaking in here. He's going to wait for us to start attacking him, and then after the first word, he's going to come rushing in here and say, What's the big deal? Four days of bashing, and the article is nothing. What's all this hysteria about? And that was his game plan. Well, it comes to find out that he was intercepted in the hallway by Boy Gary. And he said, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I'm going to go in and uh, defend myself. And I said, no, you're not. He said, we invited you to come. You turned it down. And now you're just going to sneak in there. And it's not going to happen. So that was the reason they were, you know, asked him to leave the premises. Because, again, he was doing it in a sneaky, devious way instead of just. Uh, and I want, I'm going to say something about that. I don't, I'm not going to say we're going to go into Guinness Book of Records. I don't know of any radio station in the history of this business that has fired somebody. And then two months later invited him to come back to defend himself. I never heard of such a thing. I don't think it's ever happened before. I could be wrong, and if anybody knows of it, please let me know, but I don't think so. I think it's a radio first in the history of the business. It just doesn't happen. You get fired, you're gone. You disappear. You know that. We talk about it all the time. You're gone. And they say, oh, well, he uh, went to seek uh, better opportunities and, uh, you know, whatever. And that's the way the business works. 
So here's a guy who we were going to give four hours voluntarily, who was then going to be devious, kind of sit back, wait and see the lay of the land and how the article came out. And then when it wasn't quite so bad, then he's going to come in here and try to soft pedal it and be Mr. Nice Guy. I really think he was like sucking around for his job back a little bit. I could be wrong. And to come to find out, when he left here, he thought uh, that it did him a lot of good. Like they're going to be pounding on his door, uh, knocking it down to offer him jobs. Nobody's been doing that for two months. And certainly after that pathetic performance yesterday, it isn't going to happen now. And some of you, I mean, I let everybody have their say yesterday. There were a couple of them that irritated me because they just were looking for trouble. That was obvious. But, I mean, some of you bird lickers that just cannot stop. Like that one young Cuban guy, man, he said that same thing so many times. Uh, since December, that it just, he must have it emblazoned in his brain. And he called yesterday, kept repeating, and, and did you say in these exact words, did you tell him this? I got news for you, pal. Mind your own goddamn business, okay? Don't, don't have the chutzpah to call in here and tell me what I should do and how I should have said it. I mean, this is life. This is real life. This is reality. And that's what Mr. Birdbrain's got to grow up in the face. He's out of work. He's out of work, and crying over spilt milk isn't going to get the job done. Did he make himself look better yesterday? No. Made himself look like a jerk. And whatever respect I may have had for him at all as of last December when we parted company, I mean, by now it's gone. It's completely gone because his behavior has been just pathetic. And he goes through this big song and a dance about, well, when we left here, he wanted to see other people and do other, which is fine because I feel the same way. Then why was he bellyaching in the article about, well, I thought we could be friends and maybe go to the track. Why would I associate with him now that I fired him, but I didn't associate with him when he was here? We're working together, okay? It doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. But it was pathetic. It was demeaning. It was just uh, tragic. But I'm glad that we did it. I'm glad we went through the exercise. Because now he's got uh, no more sour grapes. He had his opportunity. He was given plenty of chance to say his piece. And, and quite frankly, when I put him on, when he was uh, sneaking around in the news booth, I wasn't really sure whether they were very upset. You know, if I did put him on, they were going to have a nervous breakdown because they were not happy he was in the building under those circumstances. I'm talking about, uh, of course, management. So that was, uh, that was the real story behind the story, okay, the way all of this went down yesterday. Paul Lyle, Gilbert report. Oh, that ought to be exciting. See what I mean? It's just, it's like, and of course, part of it is Gilbert's fault, too, because he's out of control. He's calling every show in town now because he's been uh, exploited to the point now where he feels like uh, he's just out of control. And I'm not ripping him by saying that, but I'm just telling you, Gilbert, that it's just getting to be a little much. What does it say? Gilbert wouldn't leave? Well, I got news for you. It's, it's not the point. The point is that people, I mean, if you want to sit in the audience and cackle a little bit, <laughs> that was one thing. But the brutal, I mean, the way he was uh, brutalized yesterday was unconscionable. It really was. I mean, there were people, I heard a lot of it, and people making fun of him. Alex wanted him to leave. Well, it, you know, come right out and say, Gilbert, it's time to go. Adios, goodbye. That would have been the way I would have done it, okay? But, like I said, I'm a little curious why a guy on Tuesday who was adamant that there was just too much Gilbert, and he was sick of it, and he was nauseated by it, was asking if he could borrow him for a few minutes yesterday. I just, I just don't understand that. I'm sure Alex will clarify it for us when he comes in today. Uh, 21 past 10 at WIOD. We want to tell you about Reno's... We're at the world-famous Cafe Barfay. We've replaced one of the patrons' fresh ground coffee with Folgers Crystals. Let's see if he notices. Mmm, good coffee. Uh, can you pass the creamer? We've replaced the creamer with ground-up chalk. Let's see if he notices. <coughs> uh, can you pass the sugar? We've replaced the sugar with ground-up freeze-dried white mice. Let's see if he notices. <coughs> <coughs> I wonder if he'll notice what we replaced the lemon with. Okay, it's, uh... <laughs> 26 after 10... At WIOD, it's something with this overhead today. Let's uh, take some calls here, okay, because I've already said enough. Here's a Paul Lyle Gilbert report. Gone. Okay, good start. I like when you go to that first call and they're gone. Well, let me tell you something, okay? I had some stuff that I wanted to say this morning, and excuse me for taking your valuable time for saying it, okay? Whoever the hell that was. Anybody was listening to Paul Lyle anyway, how smart can they be? Uh, Fort Lauderdale. Yes, uh, I heard uh, in the last show that it's possible... Uh, Gilbert might be taking over the show? Yeah, right. I mean, I'm ready to throw myself out on Broward Boulevard if that happens. Sir, it's just a joke, okay? Oh, okay. It's just a little joke. Okay. I got, uh, I was, I had a, a good time yesterday listening to that show. It was very entertaining, but, um... It was pathetic. <laughs> pathetic. It was pathetic, entertaining. It was also entertaining. It was entertaining, but it was pathetic. Tragic. Well, I want to tell you something that was more tragic and maybe not as entertaining, but, uh... 
I went to the city of Pembroke Pine city city meeting last night, and uh, you had to you had to see them uh, arguing over whether or not to reduce the price of a hall from 500 to 300, and how they were going through the simple math on what the a actual cost of renting out a hall. It took about 15 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it was just... Uh, well, it sounds pretty pathetic, and we thank you so much. 28 after 10 at WIB. Come on, cut the crap, will you? Cut the crap. Uh, Pembroke Pine, speak of the devil. Yeah, Neil, how you doing? Okay. All right, listen, just a couple of comments on what you've been talking about. Uh, yesterday, I happened to be driving, and I caught a little bit of Alex Bennett. And that really was a terrible job, what they were doing on Gilbert. Yeah, it was uh, horrendous, actually. Really, and that... Uh, and and that then Joey, did the, Joey did the same thing. And, of course, Gilbert is just having a good time. He doesn't realize it. But And I'm not trying to be holier than thou, but there are some of us. I think Bill knows how to do it. And I, I think I've done it. At least I've tried to have fun with Gilbert as opposed to just uh, massacring him and um, making a, a, a mockery of him, which is a lot of what I heard yesterday. It was awful. Yeah, awful. I think he was just trying to impress that uh, bar rag broad he had on with him. Well, though, let's turn this into a, a Rip Alex thing, although I don't know why not, but, uh, you know, we don't have to do that, but I just I just find it very bizarre that on Tuesday he was totally burnt out with Gilbert, he was disgusted and fed up, and he did have a very valid point. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. And then all of a sudden yesterday it turns around into a, a four-hour uh, <laughs> marathon. You know Listen, what I'm saying? Uh, Neil? Yeah. One other thing, I hope this bird thing is it totally put to bed now. It's, uh, I mean, we, I'm not saying we're not going to talk about it, but as far as him, he he comes in here again, he'd be wasting the gas to come here. Okay, he's had his last gasp on this show. Yeah, because the only uh, to summarize the summary that I get out of it is that uh, he's nothing but a uh, lemon, talentless, mealy mouth, cackling monk. Lemon. Have a great day, sir. All right, bye. Yeah, I'm disgusted with him. I really am. And uh, you know, finally, I, I tried to be reasonable. I really did. And, and, I bet over backward to be reasonable and to allow people that, you know, were sympathetic toward him to call and have a lot of time because I didn't want him to come. Well, see, I told you if I came in here, I wouldn't get a chance to say. And I, I gave him all the opportunity in the world, and I kept giving him all this extra time to think of all these reasons. And the only thing he had to say was, well, it's not easy working for you. Well, nobody held a gun to his head and forced him to come in and cackle and eat those free meals every day, okay? Nobody forced him to do it. In fact, uh, when you look back on it, if it was so difficult, then maybe I did him a big favor because it was such a pain in the ass working with me. But, jeez, to come in and for four hours uh, whine, and, and so finally I lost my cool at one point. Some of you may have heard it, and I really laced into him, and I said, haven't you been listening? Don't, doesn't anything penetrate your ears? Don't you get the message? I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to talk about whatever I want to talk about, and it's my show, and I'm not going to put up with temper tantrums, and the people in the building don't want to put up with your, with your rotten temper and your nasty disposition, and that's it. You're gone. Oh, Oh, like all of a sudden you can see that little GE light bulb lighting up over his uh, head, you know, over his dome. Now, he really uh, makes me nauseous, okay? I hope he and Johnny Dark have a wonderful life together, and they can uh, run around writing letters to everybody else in the industry, telling them how none of us know anything, and they know it all, and et cetera, et cetera. And maybe someday one or both of them will get a job. Miami. Neil. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. Um, first off, I'd like to say you're ten times better without the bird. I don't even know why you had him the first. Well, you know, it's interesting. Even some of the people who were defending him yesterday were saying that they missed him. They said, but we got to admit, the show's a little better. With that boy, he got uh, all bent out of shape about that. Yeah, it's like ten times better. I don't even know how you had him on in the first place. Excellent point. A moron. He should. Well, no, that's not. Let's not uh, say a moron. Just a, a cackling idiot. Well, moron is close. But... Moron is crass. Yeah. Cackling idiot has a little flair. Yeah. Um, you're ten times better, that's all I wanted to say, and good luck. Thank you, sir. Okay. We'll need it. Okay, a little, uh, little minor suck there. It's 1031 at WIOD. We have an opening in Dade County now. If you move very fast, it's kind of like the postmortem. And I also, the thing about Gilbert is very, um, I'm not kidding around about that. I'm just disgusted with it. This, this to me, it like epitomizes the entire market. And like I said before, Gilbert has to take a lot of the blame for that. I heard he called Larry King last night and was doing a loan me $50 routine. I didn't hear it myself, but I heard a little spy report. And, I mean, Gilbert, you just, you can't, you can't be like Tom Hanks. You know, you can't do 800 movies all in the same week. There are only a few people who can do that, like Molly Ringworm. But, um, no, I still, you know, if he wants to come in once in a great while, if he wants to call once in a while, if he can get through. You know, he's always telling me he can't get through. I have no problem with that. I'm not going to blow him off, but I'm going to try to slow, put the brakes on a little bit, because it's getting ridiculous. Just... And also, speaking of ridiculous, did you hear what Stan said on that promo about how he... T I didn't hear his show last night. He took the poll, and Terry Merriman beat Giselle Fernandez. I got news for you, man. It's no wonder we have so many optometrists in this town. 
And don't tell me that I don't know a beautiful-looking woman when I see one, because I do. And Terry Merriman is not too exciting, okay? I mean, Giselle Fernandez has got better looks on her fingernails than the Terry Merriman in her whole body. And it's not even a contest. What are you guys looking at? Are you nuts? Boy, you really need some serious help. It's uh, 1033 at WYOD, Toyota. I'm dying over here. W-M-I-Q. 1036 at WYOD, Boca. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I thought we was going to tell uh, Glenn a new uh, egg shooter yesterday. I beg your pardon? I thought we was going to tell him a new egg shooter yesterday. Meaning what? Meaning uh, I thought you was pretty light on him. Yeah, intentionally. I didn't want him belly aching about the fact that when he came in, we didn't give him a chance. Uh-huh. Well, uh, yeah. Listen for a couple hours, not that this is moving pretty slow. Yeah. Well, just like this call, let's go to a, a Calder Spy Report in Miami. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Or is it Hialeah? Well, whichever. Huh. It's sort of on the borderline, you know. i got to get out my border pass to go across the street. It's right on the cutting edge. <laughs> yeah, I listened to uh, your buddy Bill this morning, and he blew Gilbert off, told him not to call his show anymore. Didn't I just say that a little while ago? Oh, I didn't hear you. I've been mm. in and out of the vehicle all mm-hmm. day. and uh, in and out, huh? Yeah, in and out. You know how it is. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, I got a uh, a good way for you to uh, screw these guys with your satellite situation. I'm going to write you a letter and explain how you can legally do it. And uh, the federal government will back you 100%. Great. I will uh, write you a little letter, put a little information packet in there. If you're interested, give us a call, and we'll be glad to help you out. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. You too. 1037 at WIOD. Tamarack. Neil. Yeah. I got to tell you, I haven't heard anything or seen anything like yesterday's show since Jim and Tammy were on Nightline. Yeah. I mean, one of the side <laughs> benefits, one of the side benefits of yesterday's show for me, personally speaking, was that uh, I finally realized I wasn't the only person that got treated like a piece of crap at one of uh, the personal appearances there. Uh, I was well, at... let me, there was a lot of conversation about that, and there's no question that that's true, but that isn't the reason he got fired. In other yeah. words... I look. I could if I wanted to be really vicious, which I wasn't, because uh, that would only play it into his hand. But if I wanted to really lay it on the line, there are dozens of things that he did. Yeah. Like uh, like the time that Stan and I wanted to kind of resurrect our little thing at the ice cream store, and all of a sudden he comes up with this cockamamie, and he started doing this repeatedly. When we any time we had a remote or no matter what it was, he had some excuse that he would fabricate so as not to go along with the game plan. And oh well, he was going to be up in Broward anyway, yeah. so he set up this deal with his real estate person. Now he did that after we had already set the date up to do this appearance, you know. And I, I just got sick of that. I mean, that was one of many things. Here he was getting basically a free ride here, and yet any time we expected him or asked him to do anything, he was ah, I got uh, important stuff to do, okay, that can't wait for another day. I mean, there are dozens of reasons that I just got fed up with his entire attitude. It sucked. His yep. attitude sucks. And the idea that he comes barging in here two months after he got his ass canned as if, oh, well, my side of the story is going to, what side? You're fired. You stunk. You are a pain in the ass. I got tired of you. You're gone. That's it. Grow up and accept it. You know, he, he can't do that. Even now he can't accept it, I'm sure. Now that Steve Kane is gone, can I play amateur psychologist here? Oh, sure. Yeah, you know we what? need we we have a void here in our lineup. We need somebody. <laughs> you know what word pops into my mind about Glenn after ingrate? Immaturity. Yeah. I'm listening to four mm-hmm. hours of this yesterday, and I'm glad you laid back a little yesterday and let him you know, give vent to explain there. This guy won't admit anything. Uh, despite your repeated conversations with him over the months, he would not adjust his behavior. It's just evident to me that the job wasn't that important to him. You know, well, guy... no, when, we, when I finally started screaming at him, and he said, well, I, I can't do that. I'm my own person. I said, fine, then there's the reason that you can't do that. That's why you can't be on the show. Oh, as if all of a sudden that clarified it for him, you know. Yeah. One last thing, Neil. Um, it, I thought also he was sucking around for his job yesterday because... I mean, it's obvious he's not a talent because he didn't get picked up right away after he got fired. And I, you know, I don't know whether or not he is going to get hired by You anyone. see, but this reveals, and this is the thing that frightens me, this reveals that he really in his own mind thinks that he could go on. Like one of his sycophants calls it, oh, yeah, it would be great if NWS put you on right opposite Neil 10 to 2. And then, you know, then it would really have something. He believes that. He believes he can go on and do a four-hour talk show every day and carry it. And the fact is... That, you know, the last time I was on vacation, most people said he did a good job, but that was out of the ordinary. In fact, uh, the, the time before that he had filled in, he had embarrassed himself so much that, in fact, that's how Alex Bennett got here. Yeah. Okay? If it weren't for the bad job he did filling in the previous time, Alex would never have been in this building. Yeah. Okay? So Alex owes him a little gratitude there, too. Well, Neil, I, I hate to say it, but I'm enjoying all this. 
<laughs> well, of course, that's what this market's all about. Okay, have a great day now. You too. Bye bye. Everybody loves a lot of bickering and hate, etc. Why are you looking at the food like? Bleh. What is that? I think uh, Toby's bringing food from the toast today. I think that's the rumor. What are you looking for, Melvin? What the hell? Who dropped a cart? Standard? Well, tell him to get off his lazy ass and go back there and find it. And don't uh, meddle around with the show. Tell him to get off this uh, show, okay? We're doing a radio show here. We're not playing Stan Major Lost and Found. God, anybody would do a poll and have his audience vote for Terry Merriman over Giselle Fernandez ought to be ashamed. I think that, I think Stan rigged it. You know, he doesn't like to admit it, but he's still back into that Philadelphia thing with Terry Merriman and all those uh, Philadelphia Twinkies. WIOD, hello. Hi, Neil. How are you? Okay, hold on a second. Uh, what uh, what card are you looking for? He dropped Anbo. What the hell are you playing my cards, you slime ball? Anbo's right there. Anchor with a whip. Yeah, get out of here, Stan. Go get some material, will you? Let's. Uh, how could that be Tamarack? I just put, well, listen. It's so bizarre now. We might as well put you on right now, right? Hi. Ahead of all these other people. Why pretty not? Up, pretty Why upset not? about it, too. You're a good man. I just called up 976 Rose because you said it was a good thing to do. It is. They're beautiful. Well, I'm having a dozen I'm having a dozen cents this afternoon. My wife's pregnant and it's her birthday. What a, what a way to celebrate. Fabulous. Tremendous. <laughs> Have two dozen cents. Yeah, two dozen. Sure. I'll send the, send the bill to your phone. Okay, <laughs> no problem. They got all the money in the world here. I was driving home last night from my health club listening to Stan on the radio talking about, uh, you know, that thing with Giselle and uh, the other one, Merriman. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I couldn't figure out why he was doing it. I mean, was there nothing else to do? I'm not, well, you're going to start picking on Stan. No, I like Stan. I call him all Well, he does have nothing else to do. It's a good time killer. Time, uh, Stan is one of the great time killers in the history of the business, and it's a good way to kill some time. He also says he's not going to be on there too long. You must not have too much confidence in himself. So. Well, well, first of all, let me say this. He has accepted to do it as a temporary thing, okay? Yeah. But why he continues to dwell on that on the air, I don't know. I, I keep know. telling him every day, cut the crap, cut the crap. I know. Just go in and do it. Sit there during the ball game, have a free meal, relax, uh, you know. And he just uh, is compelled. I don't know what the hell the story is. Can I change the subject for a maybe, second? Maybe it rubbed off he, he worked with Glenn for a while. Maybe it rubbed off. What about baseball? Are we not going to have baseball down here this year? Well, not uh, anytime soon, I don't think. Oh, what a bummer, man. I know. Can't deal with that. Oh well, let's keep our fingers crossed. Maybe they'll resolve it, you know. Let's hope. Listen, I enjoyed your show yesterday with the bird. I thought you were a real man. You handled it accordingly. You got everything pretty much straightened out. A real man. Well. Well, you could have really ever said that, too, you know. But uh, you're a nice guy, Neil. Sure. Anyway, gotta get back to work. Good Have a good you, day, sir. I'll need it. Okay. Boy, they're really sucking around this morning. 10:44 at WRD. How about those Maple Leafs, man? Watch that game last night. They kicked the crap out of St. Louis, seven to one. Alan Vester actually p played a good game in goal, and Ally Afraidy was uh, going nuts, and uh, um, Lou Franceschetti was just a great... I know nobody cares anymore about hockey, but I just uh, happened to watch it. It was great. And Toronto's only two points out of first place in the Norris Division. Who can believe that, huh? Let's bring the bird back and talk hockey, okay? Sunrise. Neil, how you doing? Great. A couple of comments. <clears throat> that sounds like a real good idea, though. Bring him back to talk about hockey. Yeah, yeah. we'll use his head as the puck. Uh, I just have one word for yesterday's, not for the show, the show was great, but the key word for yesterday, I think, is just pathetic. That's that's the word that keeps rolling around in my head. I know, you've mentioned, you've mentioned that word pathetic. already. Pathetic! <laughs> Tragic! And to talk about uh, uh, my uh, the great Gilbert, anyway, he he has been calling around sports talk shows for <laughs> years now. Yeah. You know, he used to call Ed Kaplan, and I think Bill is the first non-sports talk show that he's called. Yeah, I never heard of him before until I heard him on Bill's show one day a few yeah, weeks I... ago, and then all of a sudden he started um, just, like, multiplying. I think we have about a half a dozen Gilberts, aren't there? But the thing, you, the point you bring out on the serious side, kind of serious, about, about Gilbert and that fine line, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, it's like, when you, it's like you know, when you laugh at him, it's like half of it's because he is funny. And, you know, maybe like the other half because you're like, so, you know, you're making fun of him. You know what I mean? No. Well, it's like, you know. No, I'm not making fun of him. I find no, no, him, I'm not saying you. I I'm... find him funny and I find him amusing because he's got a good, he knows that he's a little uh, different and he knows that he's uh, bizarre and he's funny and he's having a great time with it. But I don't think he knows when he's being exploited and when people are just uh, making fun at, of him. And uh, that's what happened here yesterday afternoon. I don't give a damn what anybody says or anybody denies it. I heard it. I heard a lot of it. Yeah, I heard and it. And I, I cringed. I really cringed because a lot of the callers and also that comedian who thought she was so funny, I, she was about as funny as a wet dish rag. She had nothing to say. 
And uh, basically, it turned into the Gilbert show again because she offered not she added nothing to the show. Yeah, it got pretty lame there towards the end. Alex kept asking him to uh, I think repeat the number for a uh, Nutrisystem, and he kept the one eight. That's that's pretty original. Yeah, it was pretty lame, uh, Alex. Why was... does that have to go on? Why can't these guys doing their own thing? Here's a guy who's been in the business for many many years. He's worked in New York, in San Francisco, all over the country. What is it? Is it a disease that these people catch when they come here that anything that they hear, especially on this show? but not exclusive on this show, all of a sudden they all start doing it. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't get it either. I, I even, you know, Alex lost a lot of credibility yesterday when he did that to me. Well, maybe if he finds his, um, whatever the hell he's looking for. If he gets late, I guess. Oh, now you see, we decided we can't save that anymore. His um, cheesecake, which is really, and then all these guys go, oh, yeah, well, you're hoping it's cherry cheesecake. <laughs> oh, is that it? Oh, it's, it's getting like uh, sandbox time here at the uh, sandbox at the oldies. <laughs> All right, Neil. Have, a, yeah, great, have a good day. Have a great day. Well, I'm sure glad I got these CFL MYQ uh, jingles carted up. W-M-Y-Q. Most of the people in the audience don't even remember WMYQ. They haven't been here long enough. 1053 at WYD. Roger just handed me a bulletin here. Now, this is true. We're not making this up. A Buffalo, New York man was awarded $450,000 after surgeons amputated his penis in the erroneous belief that it was cancerous. <laughs> okay, 7 till 11, let's go to a lady from Miami. Hello. Hi, Neil. The cruelest <laughs> the cut of all, yeah. The remote in the Grove was your very best entertainment. We had a great time there. Uh, I think Gilbert's helped all the shows that were kind of going stale, so don't feel sorry. Well, this show, wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, this show is going stale? Sort of, come on now. Get serious, this He's show never fan. goes stale, it's only the audience that gets stale. Oh, it's your opinion, kiddo. Yeah. He's got a lot of class anyway, we love him. Yeah, but that's not the point. I'm not knocking Gilbert. The point is that there are people who are, he's just, it's overdone. No, not really. No. Alex phone, Alex show oh, was a lot of fun. You're and crazy. Gilbert, you're dreaming. No, Gilbert's no dummy. That's where you're dreaming. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. Don't worry about him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we love him. Yeah, okay. Pathetic. 1054 at WIOD, Deerfield Beach, hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. Hi, first time caller. I took a lot of nerve to finally call you. Uh, How's that? Are you well, I Well, I listen to you a lot, and I know you put people down if you think they get boring. But I'll try not to be. I'm from uh, central New York, like you. And I was a uh, big fan at Vernon Downs, Finger Lakes, and now I'm at Gulfstream in Pompano. Great. So I uh, have hold a lot on, of... Hold on one second. Yeah. W-I-O-D, hello. Hello. Hold Neil, on, please. Neil Rogers, please. One moment, please. Uh, where was this guy? Oh, in Deerfield, right? I'm at Deerfield. Oh, hold on a second. WIOD. Good morning. Arthur Modell would like to speak with Neil Rogers concerning football. Yeah, right. Uh, hello. <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah, I'm going to give Art Modell some pointers. Get rid of Bernie, okay? Any quarterback that plays side saddle can't be all good. Definitely. Hold on one second, sir. WIOD. Line checking. Okay, that was just a line checker. Are you done checking lines? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I don't know. There are a couple in Broward that aren't uh, lit, so, you know, be prepared. You'll be uh, It's uh, adding something to your call. Okay. Hold on. W-I-O-D. What the hell do you want? Hold on. I'll tell you in a second. W-I-O-D. Am I to take it I was disconnected, or doesn't he care to speak with me? Goodbye. Uh, yes, sir. Neil? Yeah. Okay. Well, the reason I finally got uh, pissed off enough to call because of uh, yesterday's show about the bird and uh, after seeing him on TV last night and what he looks like and I know what he sounded Hold on one second. W-I-O-D. Oh, play some jingle. Hold on a minute. We'll do it. Hey, yeah, okay. Now they're all full so you don't have to anything to worry about. Okay. you got clear sailing. Terrific. Okay. Well, I, like I say, we have a lot in common but the thing I call about is bird and then, um, I was with Armed Forces Radio and TV and this guy couldn't get an audition or pass the audition at AFN in Europe or any AFRTS. He doesn't, he's not even that good. Wait a minute. How do you spell that? F A A F R T S. Armed R-T-S. Forces Radio and Television Service. Hmm. Can we spell that on the air? You, yeah, you can just spell it. Uh, F? It could be farts, too, yeah. Now, don't, see, that's the difference. Yeah, right. I spelled it. I, it was a little subtle. And you come out and you blurt out. Farts. Well, why not? It's, you know. No, it's, it's like uh, awful. It's terrible. Right. And Terrible. I'm, oh, no, it's not. I've heard yes. you, you said a lot. Well, worse, I don't Neil. care. That's not the point, but there's a subtle way to do something. All right. 
And then well, there's a crash. Well, like, is, uh, it's like Joey. It's like a uh, elephant in a china shop. You have to do things very subtly. Well, like I'm that. not. A, yeah, all right. Hold on a second. WIOD. We want Gilbert. Hold on a minute. WIOD. Jingle. All right. Well, now they're showing up on other lines. What is it? Okay. Well, one other thing. Uh, oh, look at this. Uh, Slim Rich is here. Look at that. He put a smaller shirt on today. Looks like he lost 20 pounds. <laughs> Boy, that's great. I needed this is my last cigar. Boy, you must be psychic. Uh, Fat Rich brought me some cigars, sir. Hey, uh, all, you, you don't I, care? You don't care? Am I on? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm uh, talking to you. I'm having a little uh, rap well, I don't know. Here. You're talking about six people at once. Well, so. of course. That's what this is. It's like a little circus. You can relate to it, can't hey, you? Hey, I, I got a question. You know, that the announcer at uh, Golfstream, Ross Martin. From Finger Lakes. Exactly. Ought to go back. Exactly. Nice voice, but can't Girl. call where the camp. Sometimes oh, you don't even know what race he's that calling. Constipated sound. It's you got to watch the TV to find out what's going. Why can't we invite Tom Durkin to come down for the rest of the Gulfstream meet? I don't know. The Don family is just enchanted with Ross Morton. I have no idea what that's all about. Yeah, good voice, but can't see. No, and can't speak. Speak or he's got speak. marbles in his mm -hmm. mouth. He's the worst. Uh, a little disappointed with Alex. I thought he was going to be good, but uh, I thought he was. Oh, geez, are we going to start ripping no, Alex? Uh, now? This, Go right ahead. No, 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 no. no. I like Alex. But what? yesterday he must have been hard up for material. That woman, that woman I just called, she's so full of crap. That is the most outrageous call for anybody to say that he they didn't exploit and mock. Oh, and it was pathetic. Out. Gilbert, it was pathetic. 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 He's uh, hard up for material, so he's got to pick on Gilbert. And how come, between, how come between Tuesday and Wednesday there was this tremendous turnaround? On Tuesday, everybody, according to Alex, everybody was Gilberted out. It was getting ridiculous. Right. And then exactly. all of a sudden yesterday he's in here for the entire uh, <laughs> show, you know. I mean, Alex is a yeah. fun once in a while, but he really had too much fun at, his, at Al, uh, Gilbert's expense. Exactly. Uh, one item Make on Stan Majors. Let's send him to Buffalo for another one of those anti Hey, speaking of Buffalo, my roommate's from Buffalo, and he knows Buffalo wings like nobody. Well, that's great. Uh, Stan Majors should stick to topics. He's very good with topics. But the minute he tries, <laughs> the minute he tries to... Uh, do Play, your job. Start playing my cards. He tries to play Get you. Get your own cards, Stan. Does, Cut the crap. It doesn't work. He cannot ad lib for four hours. Do his own thing, okay? Right. Let him do his uh, Twinkie show every night, okay? Exactly. Cut the crap already. Well, listen, you've been quite a caller, sir. And well, maybe uh, I'll see you at, now that I know what you look like, and I go to Gulfstream, I'll, maybe I'll uh, stop and we'll have a beer. No chance. Not a chance. Have no. a good time. I hope you win a lot of money. Well, you'd like my, my roommate, too, so I don't know. Great. Have a lot of, like I said, we'll be looking for you. Bye. See you. Well, listen, that's the end of a very amazing first hour. We've got good old Henry Barrow standing by. Henry Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. You know, I never realized just being a little bird could be so complicated. Okay, it's 11.05 at WIOD. Boy, i got to remember those. Those will be real good for going into a record. I was going to play a record for the bird. Well, I never Star baby, but I guess we'll save that for a little later on. Deerfield Beach, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, I was. Is this uh, Neil Rogers? Yes. Uh, am I on now? Because uh, the other day uh, I, I called and called and called, and nobody told me how long it would it take for me to. Well, get you're on, on right now, sir. Rather than wasting your okay, valuable, now, look, precious airtime, all right, a year ago, rehashing the ancient past. A year ago, listen to this. A year, the ago, past, yes. I, a year ago, I called the station, Yeah. and I, I, I complained that the bird was was nothing more than a laughing hyena, mm -hmm. and I, I just assumed that the station would get rid of it. <laughs> but listen to this now. I was told this specifically, yes. that management felt that this was a good combination, mm -hmm. period. Well, what, do you, what do you anything? expect them to tell you? Well, what do they expect? You expect them to say, "Well, we're right, right now, and he'll be." Wait a minute. You expect them to say, "Yeah, you're right," and he'll be gone tomorrow because of your call? Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, of course not. There's just one one little nail in the coffin. Uh, but the other thing is, aren't you responsible for the people who are with you if it's your show? Yes, that's why he's gone. Well, how come you didn't get rid of him a lot sooner? Because I'm a a, a fool. Because I'm a soft-hearted slob, sir. I'm a jerk. Right, I'm now, the first one to tell you that. All right, now, I'm not patronizing you with the following remarks. Yes, I think you are. I think yes, you are. A, you got a good head on Yes, you are. It's a butt-licking remark. No, no, what thing, but one around. thing I did not like. Yeah. You did something when Gilbert was on that 
Uh, I resent it because uh, uh, it's similar to the Joan Rivers remark that was made about Catherine Hepburn is on a diet. Uh, she, she shakes it off when she had that problem. You made a remark about Bob Cousy. Now, if, if you want to be cute, that's one thing. But I don't believe in attacking a person who can't Sir, help sir let me say this to you. I'm not attacking him because he's got a speech defect. He shouldn't be a broadcaster, okay, Bob Cousy? If you got, who ever heard of making somebody who's got a speech defect into a, except for Barbara Walters and Tom Brokaw, sir? Cut the crap. It's 11.08 at WIV. And then I hear that uh, Alex was giving speech lessons to Gilbert yesterday. I didn't hear that part, but if I would have heard it, I'd have probably put my fist through the radio. I mean, just uh, pathetic, Alex. Come on. Let's go back to being the love prince and trolling. Did you hear me use that expression yesterday? Trolling. Trolling on the air. Boy, where have we heard that before? By the way, you'll be pleased to know that uh, Joey and Eric left here together yesterday. Uh, we have an open line in Broward at 524-WIOD and one in Palm Beach, 655-WIOD. How come yesterday we didn't have to give the numbers out, huh? Isn't that a real interesting uh, lesson with the audience? Yesterday we never gave the numbers once. I think I maybe gave that Palm Beach number. I, I relented way late in the show and gave it one time. Shame on you people. WIOD. Hello? Yes? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have like a sock over the phone or something? Uh, no. No? Who do you want to speak to? You. What do you want? What do you want to talk about? I don't know. Okay, well, think about it for a while. Call us back. Crank. Crank on five, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's nine minutes after. W-I-O-D. Hello. Okay, line checker. Write these down now, because that's going to be the next IOD contest. You're going to have to attract all of these calls. And whoever gets the first 4,000 right. W-I-O-D. Hi, can I talk to Neil? Sure, hold on, please. W-I-O-D. Hey, Neil. Yes. Um, oh, hold on a second. W-I-O-D. Line checker. Yes. That was Neil? on four, by the way. Hold on. W-I-O-D. Line checker again on four. Yes. Neil. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. W-I-O-D. <laughs> Hello? Okay, put them on hold, okay, because this other guy's going to go nuts. Aren't you, sir? Yes, Neil. You can't stand it. I know. I Neil, a, a while back ago, remember when Irene Richards called the bird and started, you know, which, ripping him? Which time? Irene called many times. Well, many times to unleash her anger and fury. And a couple days later, I called after, and I started ripping the bird, and... I don't know what happened to you, but you started defending him, and you then... Uh, well, what do you mean? Wait a minute, me. wait a minute. Was that after or before he was gone? That was before he was gone. Well, of course. So if he's still here on the show, I'm not going to orchestrate a uh, a crucifixion on the air. You crucified me that day. Well, you deserved it. I probably did. And, and look, but now that he's gone, what do you want to say? Huh? Well, okay, now just, that he's gone, what do you want to say? He's not even hiding in the news booth. Let's a, let's rip him a good ass, okay? He deserves uh, it. He's pathetic. It's true, and especially after everything he said yesterday about you, and here you were trying to defend him, and I was trying to rip his ass. And that's that a day. lot of crap about how loyal he was, man. Every time I was out of this room, even if I went to the John, I'd come back up, and on the hallway speakers, I'd hear, Oh, Glenn, I would never call except when you're... And he would suck it up, man. He loved it. He loved it. Is he going to be working anywhere? Do you, have you heard any rumors? Are you kidding me? Although I understand they're hiring, uh, they're hiring over at Publix. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's going to be pushing the little cart. Could maybe be. Maybe behind Dickie Farkle? Maybe. Okay, well, Neil, thank you. Farkle will be on the aisle on the extreme right. Uh, I guess. Good luck to you, sir. It's 11 after 11 at WID. The audience is vicious and nasty and brutal today, just the way we like it. But we do have an open line in Palm Beach. I just mentioned that. I don't really feel like right now. I felt great this morning. I came in. I felt marvelous. And now I'm a little headachey. Maybe it's these six cigars I smoked before I came. It's not cigars in the morning. Just uh, after the first dozen or so, it starts to get to you. W-I-O-D. Yes. Hold on, please. Okay? Yes. Thank you. Twelve minutes after 11. Used cars. Boy. Well, let's see. We could play. If you are a Texas, 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 Texas,
face the downfall. Give a call to John Paul. Hop to the Vatican flag. While your truck sucks our helicopter, you know, you'll get hugged with nuns adopting you. While the troops are rock and rolling you, twisted sisters are consoling you. Don't you let those U.S. narcos treat you like Imelda Marcos. Two, four, six, eight. Deng Xiaoping, don't hesitate. Tell me on a flight or wrong. We'll make Xia Xia feel at home. John Paul gives Manuel some hope, but will the dope put the Pope on the rope? Don't you wait for us to rescue. Don't be late like Nick to Jeskew. Don't you spend a century inside a penitentiary. Do the dramatic and hide in our attic and you'll be a Vatican gang. By the way, Sunday on Face the Nation, uh, Gilbert will be um, guesting. Can't you see, what is her name that does the Face the Nation? Leslie Stahl from CBS will be interviewing Gilbert, discussing uh, democracy in the Eastern Bloc nations. It's going to be incredible. Okay, Boca and Palm Beach are both open. We just mentioned that. I would be glad to tell you what the time was, but, uh, well, it's 51.33. That's what it says here. What, what, what happened there all of a sudden, out of nowhere? A clock on a wall and a clock on the thing here. They just all went nuts. Deerfield. Deerfield. Yes, sir. How you doing? This is Tony from Publix. It's who? Tony from Publix. Yeah, Tony, what's up? Hold on a second. I got to phone. Okay. Uh, WYOD. Oops, sorry, wrong number. Okay. Uh, the Boca line, by the way, when you press the button down in here, it sticks. So not only do we have a problem on the line, but also on the um, physical thing there. It's coming to the end of the line. Palm Beach. Palm Beach, Mobile. Yeah. Neil. Yes, sir. I just want to tell you something. I've been listening to you for a long time. Hold on, hold on a second. WYOD. Hello? Okay, it was a line checker in Boca. Go ahead. I just wanted to tell you something. Since you got rid of that parasite, that's the only word I can use for him. Lemming. Huh? Lemming. Well, I said what I said. You said what you said. Melonhead. <laughs> Whatever. And you should have known it. You should have known it when you were in Chicago because your show that you did from there by yourself was uh, was so fantastic. And at that time, I finally realized what it was. That asshole wasn't on the air with did you. Did you hear that alibi he gave yesterday about why he didn't go up there? I mean, that was the lamest excuse. Be, well, he knew all we'd talk about was the Cubs, and he wasn't going to be involved. Like, he could pick and choose his spots, okay? In other words, if it wasn't something that he was interested in, he wasn't going to be bothered, you know, like with a free trip to Chicago. and We stayed in the Ritz-Carlton, which to me is one of the finest hotels in the world. You almost got killed there, didn't you? Well, that's another story, but, I mean, the food was fabulous. He didn't have to go to the ball games. Uh, there were a lot of people along in the entourage who went their own way, like Melvin, who went out and got bombed and uh, had a good time. Melvin did that? Oh, Melvin had a great time up there. He didn't want to come back. Uh, also, Don't you remember my telling the story? Every morning we'd get up and go out to breakfast at 7.30. He'd be just coming in from the night before. Uh, I, I realized that when I was listening to you, you had a young girl on it. She started to laugh, and she sounded much better than him. That's when Harry Carey came in. Oh, yeah, that was... Um, Dork Lady Jr., that was the... I, I yeah, don't know. She was I, great. And I said, what the hell does he need, that cackling asshole? No, exactly. All right. You're, you're doing great. Just keep it up. There. We wish him all the best in the world. In fact, maybe, uh, you know, now that they have these uh, sun... What do they call those things where they get the electricity from... Uh, you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, solar. So, yeah, they can use his head as a solar energy source. Well, maybe he could be a taxi driver in Miami. Only he speaks English. Right? Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Yeah, I think that would be good. We could put him, like, out right between this station and Channel 7 and just point his head at the sun... And we could probably run uh, both transmitters for us in GTR. By the way, Spike Wise looked spiffy this morning. He was downstairs with his cowboy hat and his skirt-kicking uh, uh, outfit. He's going, of course, off to Atlanta. And those two, I just can't believe it, because WXIA in Atlanta, which some of us do see on a satellite, um, F-212, by the way. But anyway, they run a lot of spots for that. Um, it's FM 106 and 104. It's the only simulcast FM, I think, in the country. And they're on different sides of the city. They must have big signal <laughs> if they have the Zymelcast. And it's old countries. Uh, Country-wise uh, is going to be up there. And, boy, we sure wish him the best and hope that he does well enough that he never has to come back. Oh, my God. Where the hell have you been? Where's the Donny Osmond pictures? What? All right, Melvin, go in and get the story. All we got is a picture of Fat Rich feeding his face. At the uh, Specs, what happened? 
Where are those other? Oh, you didn't take the Donnie. You look. I looked through the window. You looked like George. Oh, no wonder you look perplexed. Oh, and look at that. There I am with one of those cigars. No wonder I'm getting a little under the weather. I'm, sm I'm chain smoking cigars. And there's another one where I'm giving the Dick Farrell a salute. That looks good. Well, why, why are you giving these to me one at a time? Is there a special reason for that? Oh, I see. Well, now look at that. I look about as Faye in that picture as Faye Wayne. That is darling. What what kind of a picture is that? It looks like a scene out of La Caja Full or something. Get I don't want that one. Okay. I don't. I don't want my dogs to see that to leave home. God, that is the fayest picture I have ever taken in my life. God. Well, this ain't too macho either, but, uh, well, that cigar. I'm holding it like uh, it could be something else, you know. That's pretty good. Now, this is a good one here. This is a good picture. Huh? Excellent. Are these mine? What, this? Well, what about this? Can I have this one? And I'll give you these other limp-wristed ones here to take back. Thank you very much. What a gentleman. Oh, I thought, no, I looked through there, and you can't always see. The lighting isn't good, and I thought it was George. And I said, where are those Donny Osmond pictures? This is um, Parallax Dennis from Parallax Systems Irrigation. So if you need to have your system irrigated, are you listening, Alex? Uh, here's a guy who could do it for you. These are the photos from Mamadi's. We had a great time down there at Specs. It was fabulous. And the Rich, of course, is doing what he does best, eating. All right, let's, uh, Deerfield, didn't we do Deerfield? This can't be another Deerfield. Are you in Deerfield? Deerfield, yeah, I'm, I'm back. Oh, okay. Oh, you're I, the one that uh, was on the phone or something. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm back. How, how was it? Oh, uh, it was okay. Okay. Um, I went to the, to, to the, uh, your friend's breakfast. I mean, the, your friend's, uh, birthday party. Bill Calder. You got it. He's got a name, I met yeah. Gilbert. Yeah. Gilbert's a nice guy. Yes, he is. Alex still had no right to do what he did yesterday. Now, he did uh, a really tacky thing yesterday, and I hope he comes on and apologizes at life, although I know he won't, but it, no, was, I know. Uh, it was very, very poor. You, and you especially the on the he heels of all that belly aching about why we had so much of him on the air. I mean, how many more shows does Gilbert need to be on? Really? He's a really, really nice guy. Yes, he is. And He's a lot of fun, and he knows, uh, you know, he knows where it's at, and that's it. That's right. And and he was nailing Stan just as much as he was nailing Gilbert. <laughs> Was he? Yeah. Well, he yeah. hates he hates Stan with a passion. I guess that's the way he's trying to replace somebody. And the guy's down and out. And you have to pick on him. You know, I would never do that to Stan. No. Although he is getting pretty. Uh... Anyway. And your numbers <laughs> should be lowered. I mean, I'll probably lower than they really are because everybody here at Publix uh, on the drivers listen to you all the time. They should be lower than they are. I mean, they're lower than they really are. Yeah. They're all the drivers here listen to you. Excellent. Well, yep. we're going to make sure you guys all get diaries next time. Uh, John Ramey, he's a douchebag. Okay, excellent job, sir. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay, it's 5133 at WIA. I don't know what time it is. It's about uh, 1246, 1146. Whatever the hell time I want it to be, I guess. Um, What is that? Call that for what? On the ear? <laughs> oh, for the time? No, I'm not going to waste my time with that. WIOD. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to Neil, please. Sure, hold on, please. WIOD. Call that for Mr. G. Will you pay? Uh, No. Let's go to, uh, no, nah, we're tired of him already. Uh, North Miami Beach, hello. Neil. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Listen, no matter what anyone says, you're a great humanitarian. You bet. You hung out with that bird for the long. longest time. Too long. Much too long. You know, and then and then with, with, with Camilla's house and with Gilbert, you know, and, and, and then they, they abuse of you, you know? I wish. You know, I wish. No, I well, mean, I kept what, Eric yesterday. what Alex me, did, me. I mean, Alex just destroyed him. He really did. I heard him tell, tell Gilbert to say Red Rover, and, 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 and he, was, he, was, he was arguing about the dangerous crabs and everything. I mean, he just ripped them. He was ripping uh, Gilbert's dangerous crabs? Yeah, something. Well, you don't monkey around with Gilbert's dangerous crabs, I'll tell you that right yeah. now. Well, listen, I think, I know this Those is, are fighting words. So. I know this is something you don't do that much, but I think you should go on his show... And just rip him a new ass. Who? Uh, Alex. Ah, uh, see, I don't go for that Steve King contrived. I'm going to come on and well, what? But let me rip tell you, him he's, for what? He's being like Steve King. He's coming in a couple minutes every day before you show him. I, I, I don't have any audience. problem with that, but I want to say it again. Why isn't anybody responding to this? Are they all deaf? Don't you remember right. when he came in on Tuesday? I don't know. Maybe he didn't do it he on said here. No Gilbert. It was at the beginning of his show, and he said it's a Gilbert free... He must have said this 30 times Tuesday, all during the right. show. 
It's a Gilbert Free Tuesday, and tomorrow's going to be Gilbert Free Wednesday, and every day on my show is going to be Gilbert Free because it's out of control. Right. And between Neil and this one, and even Stan's talking about it, it's just... Right. And he's right. He had a very valid point. It's just getting out of control. Then he comes on yesterday, and he's going to have him on for 10 minutes, and uh, it turns into a, uh, a nightmare. I, right. just, I don't get it. Right. Well, let me, let me ask you something. Why don't you talk to Boy Gary? Well, what the hell do they want? Talk to Boy Gary about giving Gilbert maybe half of what the bird made. And put them on your show. No. Maybe about twenty-five grand a year. No, no, I don't. I work alone, sir. You know, it's a lot of fun. Once, once in a, a week, once, once in a while. I don't like to be predictable. Once in a while. Once in a while, you'll bring Gilbert in. Right. All right. We like him to call Gilbert. Call once in a while. Okay. All right. Thanks. See you. Bye. Uh, are they going to do something about the clock today, or is it? I don't. I don't get that. Where does this time come from? I sure hope it's not connected to the atomic clock. Because otherwise, the whole world is in big trouble. I can just see the Queen standing out there looking at Big Ben right now. Or at Prince Charles. Boy, they had a thing about, um, I don't know, it was Entertainment Tonight or one of those last night about uh, Prince Charles and Diana. He is so meus. I mean, honest to God, that man, that child, whatever he is, I'm not sure what category he fits into, but he is so ugly and scrawny and his ears are bigger than his body. He looks like Dumbo on a bad day. And he was in a bathing suit, and he's got, like, the ugliest, the most hideous body. His body's almost as ugly as his face. And uh, I, those British with that royalty, there's just got to be something done about that, okay? They're just like the bird. They don't know they lost the war, okay? Nobody ever told them that they lost the war. And they just uh, don't know what the hell is going on, those British. We'll probably get a call about that, huh? It's one of those queen worshippers. Anyway, and Stan is looking at my watch. It's 11.50 at WYOD. Lord. Okay, it's 51.33. <laughs> Are they ever going to fix that? What the hell happened? The clock on the wall, and then we have a little clock on our board here, and it's uh, they both say 51.33, and they're just stuck in suspended animation. I wonder if there's something significant about that. Maybe that's a code. Here's uh, Pembroke Pines. Hello. Oh, wait, let me dry my hands. Washing nipples. Uh, Neil, missed you at the Calder's birthday party the other night, but uh, we, I saw so many of these uh, strange chronics, like the guy with the eyes. Yeah. We were talking to him, and guess who he's a friend of? Your I other know. buddy, Ken Block. No, I know that. I already oh. know that. Yeah. He was birds all, birds he, of a feather. You know, oh, Ken's such a nice guy, and, how, and he loves Glenn so much, and you yeah. know, you screwed Glenn so much. Yeah, bad. oh, I know. I know. He's the one that came out to the track that day at Hialeah, and they uh, had him thrown out. He told us that story and how you were so, you know, he was he was just funning with you, you know. and He, just... he wasn't funning with anybody. He's standing behind me, babbling to nobody. I mean, there was nobody there, and he's standing way behind me. Uh, oh, what you did to the bird was unconscionable. And he's got this other goofball that hangs out with him, this Alex. And uh, I'm telling you, it's just it's amazing when guys get to be that age and they have nothing better to do. It's it's like sandbox time, you know. It's, it's unbelievable. Pathetic. Well, anyway, last night I was on my way to class. And I clicked in on Ernie Sochin's show just before 7. Oh, boy, you're covering all the bases now. Uh, what can I say, Neil? And uh, guess who he had on? Mr. Levitt, Farrell Levitt, do, uh, discussing his in, uh, an, investigative, uh, an investigation he had done into your friend and Coral Gables, and how uh, you had uh, done all these bad things to him, and how you had personally threatened him and his wife yeah, and right. kids. And, sure. Uh -huh. And when uh, Ernie was defending you, and Ernie pointed out that, well, if Neil was a bad guy, why was the restraining order put against this other guy? Yeah. And uh, Farrell goes, oh, it's because the Cox Corporation is so big and, and poor Jack is just one little well, guy. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Dick Farrell is one of the most chronic troublemakers I've ever encountered in the business. It's no wonder that uh, Steve is the one that found him. <laughs> and from the day that he came in this building, he was looking to make trouble. That's his, that seems to be his uh, main goal in life. He's still to make trouble. the pot. Well, good good luck to him. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, last last thing. One he's last, really he's really risen to it. he's really risen to his own level now at FTL. Oh, it's sunk to his uh, yeah. well, whatever. No, anyway, so enough. last night when Stan was playing some uh, police song at ten, I clicked back to FTL and guess who did a fifteen minute interview with Gilbert? Paul, uh, what's got Paul Weil? Uh. He had crying. Gilbert, you're my friend. Why didn't you call my show? And Gilbert goes, Well, you have my number. You never called me. That's it. And, uh, That's and it. I, I'm going to. I'm going to do. Listen. I'm going to do the same thing that Bill did this morning. Okay. I, I don't uh, Gilbert, you're a wonderful guy. I love you. You're funny, and I'll use the carts. But that's it. But enough, okay. is enough. Gilbert, enough. I mean, he's just out of control. It's just it's it's like a um, mania now. It's insanity. 
And I'm not saying that anybody owns anybody else, but you just you just can't be all over the dial everywhere monopolizing every show in town. That it takes the edge. It's not funny anymore. Absolutely. It's pathetic. Absolutely. All right, Neil. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. Yeah, that cinches it for me. Gilbert, we wish you the best, okay? It's 11.56 at WIOD. There's an open line in Dade County if you rush now. But, of course, we've always got, <laughs> just uh, just to be, you know, safe. Kendall. Hello. Yeah. How you doing, Neil? Okay. Um, wow, this is great. I'm a first-time caller. It is great. And uh, How is it so far? Well, I'm okay so far. Are you standing up or sitting down? I'm sitting down. Clothes on? Uh, yeah, well, something's out, but I, I got the clothes on. Anyway, um, Gilbert Mania has taken over Kendall. I mean, I'm a Miami-Dade student, and we're all nuts about Gilbert. <laughs> oh, good. Maybe you can have him on your station down there. I, yeah, I wish we... I, hopefully we will soon. Yeah. But uh, I made a little tape for you. Maybe you'd like to hear Gilbert in action. Uh, what is it? it? Well, it's a little something I made. Okay. You want to hear it? Here something it you made? Yeah, here it is. My, my, my name is... My name is... My name is... And don't forget it. Excellent. Okay. I'm glad you guys are learning something down there. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. That was cute. 11.58 at WIOD. We have an opening in Dade County now where um, Albert Einstein just hung up. Now, he's a good guy. I don't want to get uh, all psychotic, but put it away, pal. Uh, we have an open line in Dade County, 751-WIOD, and one in Palm Beach, of course, at 655-MUNG, if we can say that. Can we steal a word from Lee Fowler? Can we say MUNG on the air? Oh, God, it just wears you out. It just uh, tears your kishkis out. But that's the way it goes. Don't forget Alex Bennett today and uh, something unusual, a comedian on the Alex Bennett Show. Joe Vega will be here at 3 p.m. We all, of course, know Joe. And uh, that's it. I'm sure there will be more. And, of course, that live studio audience and food coming in. Now, speaking of food coming in, I don't want to start getting... Did you call? There, yeah, boy, here's a guy who's worth every penny of it. Well, probably be my last chance. I'm going to be broke after this. I believe it. Well, just send us the bill. We won't pay it, but send it to us. It'll make you feel better. Yeah, all right. You send me a quarter. I'll send it to you. Okay. Neil. <laughs> we'll send you a stamp. Oh, uh, okay. Send me the stamp. Neil. Yeah. What happened with the bird yesterday? I mean, why did he even bother showing up? That's an excellent question. Well, he thought he was going to be real cute and Mr. Coy, and he was going to come in and crash the uh, the uh, proceedings here, and we just caught him with his tail between his legs, so to speak. I think he did more damage than anything else. Yeah. Well, he sure did in my eyes, I'll tell you that. I think he's a nerd. Yeah. I think he's a jerk. I know. They just took the whole cake and the ice cream out of here. Well, we didn't want the party in here. We wanted to eat the ice cream and the cake. And where's my check? Boy, this is getting pretty smarmy in here, I'll tell you that. What is it, sir? The bird? bird? The bird. Yeah, the bird is history, right? You sure bird. Now. He's not going to be showing up here any day now. Well, he's not on this show. I'll guarantee you that. And if okay. anybody else puts him on, I'll do a week and rip them. I'll tell you right now. Yes, we, don't want him out. we want him off the property, sir. I am quite used to being without him now. We want his feathers off the property. Let him go make his mess someplace else. And, uh, I'll go back to Gloves 94 and be Irene Richards' sidekick. That's what he deserves. As far as Alex goes, I think he's finding his niche. I don't know. Give him a little more time. What is it? I think he's trying to be too much like you. I really no, he's he not. He's not at all like you. I swear, I can't believe it. No, he doesn't sound like yes, me. He does. No, he doesn't. Okay, Neil. He's hey, a little listen. more whiny than I am. I'm poverty stricken enough here. i got to hang up this okay, thing. Okay, see ya. It's 21 till 2 at WIOD. It's got nothing to do with him being like me. It's just got to do with he's got to learn the lay of the land, so to speak. The lay of the land, which is what he's looking for. Here's the Knott's Landing lady. Hi, Neil. Were you on before? Yes, I well, was. Well, I'm very sorry, but That's I was getting okay. emotionally distraught and carried away, and I uh, shined you, I guess. That's okay. That's okay. You know what? I found out we're going to be related. Really? Related by lease. What do you mean? My brother's fiance, her aunt, is your landlord. Are you serious? Is that unreal? <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. Your brother's fiance's aunt. <laughs> That's right. Is my landlord, my landlady. Your landlady. In California. Right. Well, they're nice people. Yeah, they are. 
And they also want me to keep my satellite dish. That's right. So does my brother. Good. Oh, boy. I sure lucked out now. He's got good ideas to help you. I'll tell you one thing that's really fascinating. All of a sudden, the last couple of days, my neighbors are so friendly. It's uh, disgusting. Really? They're just all walking their dogs. Hey, how you doing? We weren't the ones they called. Sure like to see that Ferrari uh, finally move from over there for just, you know, and uh, see Dave came and washed the car. Boy. Yeah. Well, so. listen, that's a big improvement. I'm not complaining. At least they're speaking. That's a good start. That's true. That's true. So, not planning. We're going to hope it's good tonight. Well, we know that uh, Michael and uh, the old senator there, who I'm getting so tired of I could vomit, um, we know that uh, they're going to have a little chat about something because yeah. we saw the preview last week. So right. at, least, at least he'll be on for another 20 or 30 seconds, maybe more tonight. He'll be sharing with William Devane. And, so. of course, we have all that blackmail. Now, that ought to be pretty interesting, all the blackmail stuff with... Uh, with Tom. With Tom and what's his name? Yeah, I can't ever think of him. I can't either, and I think there's a good reason. Henry? Is it not Henry? It's um, It's Harvey? Harold. 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 I was close. Harold. Yeah, Harold's a a dork. Right. And you notice how fast, how quick he made up with uh, his wife. I mean, that was the best he could get. That wasn't even any fun, you know? He knew he'd have nobody else. Yeah. She must uh, need some uh, contacts. Definitely. You figure the girl's got bucks, and she's settling for that. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll never last. No. Never last. And ought to be pretty good. I think so. And I think they're going to put uh, William Devane away at the end of the show tonight. Yeah, let's hope so. Put him in a rubber room for a while. Well, we'll both keep our fingers crossed. Maybe he can go off and visit Donna Mills. Yeah, that's a good idea. Did you hear the thing that next season is uh, Michelle Lee's last year? Is it? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, that's all right, as long as uh, Michael stays. Stays through our play. Now, maybe he'll be the main character. Right. Sounds good to me. Maybe he'll move in with Mac. Right. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. There she is, the Knott's Landing Lady. We got our ice cream and cake. The cake is delicious. The ice cream, of course, is vanilla. Right? It's okay, but vanilla is so... I don't. I do not believe that anybody likes vanilla ice cream. I mean, it's it's okay, but it's nothing exciting. Mm. Anyway, it's 142 at WIV. Are you still eating? Okay, hold on. Oral Gables, hello. Don't be. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Can't you finish it? Come on, you can do it. A Nick head. <laughs> Excellent. It was worth it, wasn't it? Yeah, after all, that's old Brotherhood Week, right? You feel better now, sir? Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Okay, boy. Uh, Del Rey. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay. Hey, listen, I got a baseball question. Get off this bird crap. Get off the bird crap. Excellent. Uh, you see Mitch Webster, Webster got a million five? No. Yeah, from the Cleveland Indians. What, to stay home? <laughs> That's what I thought. Boy, you got to be careful. No, I saw on the paper the oh, other day. Oh, He stinks. A million five for a guy who strikes out a hundred times? Well, lucky only got 675000 That's what I heard the other day. And I would pay him a lot more than that. Just to come by the house. You bet. Hey, listen, when you were at UM doing the games... Were you there when Nelson Santovini was catching? Sure. How about Mike Browning? Yeah. Danny Smith? Yeah. Ross Jones? Sure. Those are all my kids. What do you mean they're all your kids? Well, I, I used to coach those guys. In oh, you used to coach? Well, don't say they're all your kids because that would be quite an accomplishment. Yeah, really, all at the same time. Because Ross Jones was Jewish. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he wasn't. Yes, he was. I think, or half. Maybe. Uh, um, Danny Smith was a nice kid. How about... G- oh, Mike, yeah, Browning, no? Mike Browning uh, was a pretty uh, bizarre character. He sure was. I had him when he was 15, and he went all the way through the Legion team. Did you ever give him a bar of soap? <laughs> I don't think he knew how to took a bath. No. Listen, I just wanted to call and say the bird fly out of the nest. Those were the days, boy. That's when U.N. baseball was uh, really, I tell you. Yeah, when, when Skip was there, they, they you know, yeah. they, they had a good team. Well, I'm not saying that uh, they're not good now. They might not have a surprising season this year. They start out good against Stetson. Let's hope so. You bet. Okay, Neil. Nobody liked my buddy Ron, let me tell you. Well, yeah, we grew up right down the street from Ron. He's, He's a great guy. Ron is the greatest. Okay, have a nice day. See ya. Bye-bye. 144 at WIOD. That sounded like George Washington there. It sounded like the father of our country. Boy, this is not bad cake. I like the artificial uh, coloring the best. Mmm. Not bad at all. What did I say? Stetson Seton Hall. Well, excuse me, okay? Bite the big one, okay? Just leave me alone. I'm having my cake. Hey, we're seeing how you sound like Mike Rosenthal now. You made a mistake. You made a mistake, right? Hi, everybody. This is Gilbert, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers, and I like it when Neil sits in on my show. Anytime, Gilbert. 
Okay, uh, Deerfield still eating, of course. No, of course. Let's go to uh, Parkland. Hey, Neil. How you doing? This is all about Gilbert. Sounds like you're eating, too. Mm, this is all about Gilbert. Yeah. First an observation, suggestion, then a Gilbert spy report. Uh, I don't know if you've realized, Gilbert is the Larry Bud Melman of the Neil Rogers show. Yes, I do. And you can you can use him in that, in the same way you, uh, Letterman uses him. Yeah, uh, Bud Melman's only on once in a while, though. Yeah, once in a while. He's, he's otherwise... not on he's... every night, he's not on every day. Exactly, otherwise... He's he can... on once in a while. Right. In any case... Uh, I'm just saying that before you, you before you decide to get rid of him, you were the first one to have him on your show. No, I was not. And you were the first one to have him on the show, not on the phone. Oh. No, I wasn't. Uh, Joey Reynolds. No, you had him at the remote last week. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, in any case, uh, Gilbert Spire for Gilbert was on the Larry King show last night. I know. He did the $50 routine. That's what I heard, too, the grapevine. Yep. Okay, that's it, Neil. I've got to go back. He's everywhere. Okay, hey, good luck to you. 146 at WIOD. Boy, it's been a pretty interesting day. We had a little, um, what the hell did we have? Well, we had the pizza from GTR that they gave us very grudgingly and also made a few uh, derogatory comments. I got news for you, man. Next time anybody except Meg's son comes over from GTR, they've had it. What's his name? What is it, Robin? As in Batman? Or Robbie? As in uh, Joe Jr.? Okay, Robbie, you can come by here anytime, okay? Just take your clothes off. Nobody will tell Mom. He is going to look better, isn't he? In the beginning, he was pretty schmutzy looking, man. He needed, like, uh, some help. But now he's going to look a little better. Or I'm getting more desperate. I'm not sure which it is. This Saturday night, it's backed by popular demand. You can win cash in the Papano Harness Super $5,000 giveaway. This Saturday night, enter to win your share of 5000 bucks in cash. Oh, Andy, where the hell is this show gone? Is this mobile still here in Boca? Yes, I am, Neil. How shocking, are you? Shocking, shocking, sir. <laughs> I knew that would set you back a couple. It takes me aback. <laughs> Hey, Neil, where did this Gilbert guy come from, anyway? Where did he come from? Yeah, all of a sudden now, hey, this guy's all over town. He's like, uh, it's like an epidemic, sir. He's everywhere. <laughs> He's spreading all over the radio dial. I think you bring out the best in everybody, Neil. Yeah, sure, like the bird, for example. Yeah, that's, a good that's, example. A, that's a, an excellent example. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, Neil, I got a question for you. Do you remember a guy named Zachary? Used to be on WNEW up in New York. No. And he, had, he used to host a... Uh, a thriller show on TV, you know, uh, with the sci-fi well, I never stuff. lived in New York, so I don't, uh, I'm sure uh, Alice will know who that is. Okay. I was just wondering. And one other thing. You remember about five or six years ago, they said that uh, if they ever got a basketball team, we'd get a hockey team. Yeah. And they tried to sell tickets or season tickets. No, they had no, that's a long time ago. That was the Screaming Eagles. That's 14 years ago. 14 years ago. See, yeah. time flies when you're having fun. You bet. Hey, Neil, I want to call a friend of mine a douchebag. Can yeah. I go ahead? Sure, quickly. Okay, it's Bobby... Bobby C. Okay. Thanks, Dale. See ya. Boy, that was uh, beyond belief. Let's go to Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Yeah, Neil? Yeah. Yeah, listen, uh, I called earlier, and I'm the guy that said something about Levitt. I wanted to apologize for what I said. I didn't mean to. I got excited when I found out he oh, was Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you straightened it out. Let's go to Miami. Hello. Hello. Hi, Neil. I just came from California, Neil, and I'm looking for Alex. Good. Well, he'll be here in just a second. Come into the audience, sir. I'm sure he'd be glad to uh, talk things over with you. Miami, hello. Please don't take Gilbert out of my life, Neil. Uh, boy, all of a sudden, it's getting close to 2 o'clock, and all the lightweights are calling. Let's go to Fort Lauderdale. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm holding for Gilbert. Okay, hold on. Uh, Miami. <coughs> hold on a second. Uh, Boca? Yeah, Neil. Yeah. A little spy report on Gilbert. Did you know that he was on Larry King this morning about 4 o'clock? Yes, sir. We just mentioned that within the last 8 or 9 minutes, I think. But thank you again so much. We've only mentioned that about 15 times today. But uh, good luck to you. I love these people who have no idea. They just tune in the last 10 minutes of the show... And all of a sudden, they're calling in with great revelations. That we know how many people we got coming in. I see two chairs. That's enough, he said. You can tell us, Nick. Come on. How many are coming in? Twelve? We have twelve coming in today? We have enough for a jury and a minion. How do you like that? Let's go to uh, Pompano. Hello. Get a light, now. Good one. Great call, sir. Very creative. Marvelous. Miami. Alex. Oh, God. Are you putting? Are you screening these, or are you just uh, putting them on hold? I do better when I put them on hold. W I O D. Uh, Neil, you and Gilbert suck. Uh, excellent. See, I get the good calls, Ma Melvin. W I O D. Yeah. Neil rules the world. Uh, let's try a mobile in Palm Beach. Hello. I'm dying over here. I'm mobile, no less. Man, all of a sudden they, they just got it in their mind. The last twenty minutes they're going to do this every day now. Is that? Is that what it's all about? Save it for Alex. My God, the lightning round. That would be good. I'll even get the buzzer out for him. Dade County, hello. Hello. Okay, hold on, sir. WIOD. Line checker. Thank you. WIOD. 
W-I-O-D? Gilbert sucks. The bird sucks. You're better by yourself. Good one. Broward. Yeah, I'm still holding for Gilbert. Oh, okay. Sorry to come back to you. Broward County. Hello. Oh, that's right. That's the eater in Deerfield. Palm Beach. Holding for Alex? Okay, hold on. We'll have them all full for you here in a second. Dade County. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Yeah, I'm calling just so I don't have to listen to all those other douchebags that are talking to you. Yeah. I mean, geez. It's your show, right? Yeah. Why are they calling promoting everybody else? Uh, I don't know. You know what, Neil? I've never, what? ever, ever called it. I listen to every show. Why not? Show there Why is. not? Why huh? are you some kind of introvert? Introvert? Yeah, some kind of antisocial moron. No, you I sound have... like a reasonable guy to me. No, no, no. Wrong, wrong, wrong kind. No, no, no. I, I've listened wrong to kind of what? What? Oh, look at that. I got another cigar here. That ought to give me a real good headache. What is it now? <laughs> huh? Have a nice day. Let's go to uh, Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello, hello. Listen, I don't have to get problem. that excited about it. Listen, after all these other calls, <laughs> go ahead. I have had a problem for the last three or four weekends. Sounds like it. I have. It's been a bad one. Every time I turn the television on, I see Alice. You see Alex? Alice. Oh, Alice. I want to know one thing. Yeah. Where did he get those ears? I don't know. Where did he get those eyes? Where did he get that nose? The ears. Though. Where did he get that fly? Ears, the ears. The ears. Alice Rantel. Mm-hmm. I think you ought to uh, call uh, Alex today and give him a little seminar on Alice Rantel. I'm sure he'd be excited about that. Dave County, hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm calling from beautiful Miami Lakes, home of sun and fun. Great. I'd like to call my good friend Cuzo a douchebag of mom. You're calling from the Miami Lakes? Miami Lakes, we do have douchebags up there. Speak it English. Bueno, you are much English, right? Okay, okay just not... calm down, sir. Calm have down. American, I don't know what any of that means. Have a tremendous life, a wonderful day in America. Okay, and say hello to El Pajaro for us. <laughs> See it. Uh, Del Rey, hello. Is this the big boss man? Oh, God. Hollywood. Yes, Neil. Yeah. Listen, Neil, uh, we're from the Italian American Club, and we just wanted to make a comment on Joey Reynolds that we enjoy listening to him. We think he's very entertaining, and we're glad he's on your team with WIOT. Excellent. Thank you for listening to us. Okay, sir. Have a nice day. Good call. Joey Pinto. Why would a guy change his name from Pinto to Reynolds? Isn't that a little unusual? Yeah. As in Bean. As in Car. As in Has Bean. As in Car. Yeah. Anyway, well, all lines are lit. You want to put these all on hold for Alex? Because I can uh, kill a couple of minutes here. Easily. In fact, there are some days when I don't take, not very often, but once in a while I get a little bug in my ear and I just uh, ramble for four hours. Who the hell wants to talk to all these nerds, right? Anyway, Alex's special guest at two this afternoon will be Gilbert. And (laughs) (laughs) that would be something, boy. That would really be incredible. Don't say it, though. He'll come in. That's the problem. He's everywhere. He was on Larry King last night at about, uh, what, 3 in the morning? Something like Carson's that. show tonight. Probably, and Letterman. He did the Letterman special the other night, and I was going to be on Carson tonight. He's going to, uh, Ed McMahon, look out. You're going to be on one of those Budweiser Clydesdales heading out of town in no time if you don't watch your ass. I see Gilbert's uh, picture on those uh, Publishers Clearinghouse uh, numbers. That's there, it. Right? Gilbert's coming to your house with $10 million, <laughs> and even if there's no money, you'll have a few laughs, okay? Palm Beach. Bill. Yeah. I wonder if you could recommend uh, a place for uh, lunch for me today. Uh, I was looking, I was wondering if I... I need a nice, big, juicy ham sandwich with some nice, juicy, big, heavy mayonnaise that's dripping out. A nice, big, juicy ham sandwich. <laughs> you know where I could get me one? Yeah, it's called Goyesha Village, sir. It's right uh, right by you. <laughs> Tell Fat Rich to stop giving out our hotline. Was he getting a call on the hotline? Who is it? Is it for him? Well, who is it? Who is it for? It's for us. Hello. Hey, I'm the, I'm the guy with Michigan State shirt, that's all. Well, how come you got this line? Who gave you this number? Fat Rich. Oh, my God. Fat Rich is giving out the hotline number to listeners? But Uncle Neil. Oh, Uncle my. Uncle Neil, remember this. I've had this number for over two weeks, but I've respected you enough not but to. But who gave it to you?